Hey guys, today we will be showcasing our first feature from the network, rapper Mikey Austin, all the way from my hometown, Lansing, Michigan. Be sure to stay tuned and find out what makes him not your average guy. Alrighty, so after I explain to you, um, you know, kind of what I'm doing and what my brand stands for, what makes you not your average guy and what makes you stand out? Sure. Um, I think for myself, well, hi everybody, this is Mike Austin, <laughs> but uh, I think for myself, um, everything that I want to do, um, it goes deeper than the surface. Um, and I think that that's kind of what separates me. So like, there's a lot of people that say, well, I want to be an actor or I want to be a singer or I want to... Uh, be a doctor or whatever and they might have the reasons just because this is what I enjoy this is what I find interesting but for me I feel like everything that we do um, just in our life whether that be our passion or our career uh, it's all about platforms mm -hmm. so for me to do what it is that I enjoy to do I understand like this is something that I love to do um, I couldn't see myself doing any other thing but at the same time I realize it's a platform to do something bigger um, and at my age, I've been able to kind of figure that out. So at this point, I'm using my music, which is something that I love, something that I'm passionate about, to be a platform to reach out to people within my community. So outside of the music and the things like that, I've also been able to, um, just this year, we've raised $5,000 for five students within the Lansing School District that are continuing their education in the arts. So for me to kind of like look at myself and it's like, well, we didn't have art programs in our high school, right. and we didn't have those resources. Um, and if we don't have it then, I know damn sure. We'll right. say, I know for sure that they don't have it now. So um, just to kind of look at that and be like, well, I can use this musical platform to do something bigger than to just rap at somebody or to make a song that people like, right. or to actually do something that will resonate and uh, will impact people in the future. So I think that that's kind of what separates me. Um, Right. within my music and within everything else that I do, that it's not just about me or what it is. Right. I want it's to bigger do. than you. Exactly. And it's bigger than me, and it's also surrounded around doing something for others and how can I um, use what I love to touch somebody else for the most part. Right. Good, good. I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, what inspired your career as an artist, and when did it kind of begin? Yeah, so it started, I was probably about five years old. Um it's the, it's the story for me is uh, just my parents coming from that religious background. So um, my mom, she was a Sunday school teacher. My dad, he was like a minister in the church. Um, and my mom, she used to write raps for me and my brother. Um, and kind of looking back at it, it's like super funny. <laughs> she would make us go up there and perform in front of the church or she'll write poems for us and we would have to recite them at different church gatherings and events and stuff. So that's how it all started. And um I was probably like five years old, and they called us the Austin Boys. Uh, <laughs> so that's where it started. And then from there, um, just realizing that this is something that I actually enjoy, so kind of picking up stuff on my own. Um, and like I said, I didn't have those resources to teach mm -hmm. me how to write songs or to play instruments, so I taught myself um, just because I knew that it's something that I wanted to do. So I picked up the piano, I picked up the drums, I picked up the guitar, um, and really just dedicated to it and realizing that this is what I wanted to do. I can't wait around and have somebody just teach me everything I need to know. So kind of just start on my own, I guess. Um, and then later I picked up just writing songs and rapping and just putting it together to, you know, use my words to encourage people and um, make different melodies. And I put on my first project in July of 2016. And uh, that project was full of just older stuff and kind of like listening to it now, it's like mm -hmm. kind of a thing in a sense, um, especially like with the stuff that I have now. But just that project was able to open up so many cool doors and being able to perform different places and different um, environments for the most part, whether it's like a concert at the Loft in Lansing or doing like a crazy house party, like mm -hmm. just being able to express myself in all kinds of environments. Um, and right now I just put out my first single and March of March the 31st um, off of the new album I put out a music video on Friday um, I'm putting out another single this coming Friday and then my album comes out on the 19th so it's been a, it's, right. it's been it's been a lot leading up to it um, and I've gone through a lot of different phases to get to where I'm at now but I'm super excited to put out this new project and um, just continue to grow with the crowd so great 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 
Um, so if you had to choose, who is your artist inspiration and kind of what is your take on hip hop now and today? Okay. Um, it's crazy because like I go in phases of like who my inspiration is for like, I can't even say the, the week, but for mm-hmm. like the day. So like my inspiration of today um, musically would probably be uh, The Roots. Okay. Just because I come from this musician type background, and they were like the first group that I ever heard like really incorporate mm-hmm. like live drums and live bass and keys and just everything that they were able to bring to hip hop. And it wasn't in this way that was like just like trying to blend genres, but it was still kind of boring. It was like super, super dope. And like even before me having this interest in live instrumentation, I feel like it still would have captivated me. Um, so those are like my influences, just seeing how they kind of changed the game mm-hmm. and how I'm able to express myself now because of uh, their contributions to music. Um, but as far as like the state of hip hop, I feel like it's like a lot of times like the older generation or the old heads kind of uh, bag on it or whatever, but I feel like it's all the same. Like if you think about it, just like the origins of hip hop in the late 1970s and everything that was going on within the community is what led to the evolution of hip hop. So whether that was the war on drugs or um, just the poor housing projects and stuff like that, like all of this was a response from the black community, just talking about what they were saying. Um, And I feel like it's the same thing, whether you listen to like the drill rap that's going on in Chicago or some of the Detroit rap, like a lot of it is still talking about the same thing. We're still dealing with police brutality. We're still dealing right. with all mm-hmm. the same issues inside of our community, and we're still expressing those same things. Um, so I feel like that's one way to look at it. But mm-hmm. then there's also like this newer wave of like the Yachty's and yeah. um, Lil Uzi Vert's and like just those guys. And mm-hmm. like for me, I'm still a fan of that too. Right. Um, just realizing like how far hip hop has come. So like, if you think about all the different genres of music, like hip hop is fairly young. Like if it started in the late seventies, what is it like 40, 40 years or so? Like it hasn't been around like a super long time. But even when you think back to like where it started, it started with like a DJ scratching right. and an MC kind of just getting the crowd involved and everything sounded the same for the most part. I mean, everybody had their unique styles but it was still the same. And then now looking at it and like seeing how there's like subcultures within hip hop right. and you can have like the Boom Daps and the Joey Badasses while at the same time you can have the Little Uzi Verts while at the same time you can have like the J. Coles and the right. Kendricks. Like mm-hmm. that's crazy to me because like whatever you whatever you look for within music, you can find it in right, hip hop. So like it's super dope to me. I feel it, I feel it. Yeah. So, um, I know you've always been very active in the community. Um, I know you had Project Imprint, and you recently just had an assembly um, at your old high school. What has been your favorite active service? Um, I think as of right now, um, I can't just say one event, so Mm -hmm. I would have to say, like, the whole Rio Town Sessions Mm -hmm. um, campaign. So, Mm -hmm. like, we started that in December of 2016. And that was like with little planning, it was kind of like, this is what I want to do. This is what I feel like I should be doing. Right. Let's do it. And we probably said that two weeks before the very first event. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the very first event was like really successful. Um, and since then, we've been able to just do like a like more than what I anticipated. So we've been able to do different shows, featuring different artists. Mm-hmm. And it's not specific to just music. So like LZ Cannon, we highlighted him and we did like a really big art gallery mm-hmm. with all of his stuff on display. And it's actually still at the Robin Theater mm-hmm. if anybody wants to check it out. But um, just seeing how the community just comes out and supports. I think that's probably been my biggest takeaway with the work that I've been able to do like in this past five or six months mm-hmm. is that the community wants to support they just need something to support right. so like being able to just start stuff like that and mm-hmm. seeing how the community comes out and then even the black arts matter celebration that i put on like that was the first show i've ever put on mm-hmm. uh that actually sold out like to be honest that's the first show that i've been to in lansing that's sold out so like yeah. it was really cool to be like at the head of that mm-hmm. and just say how like how engaged the community was mm-hmm. and how much it meant to them like of course it means a lot to me but seeing right. that like this is something the community can identify with and get behind as well and then even with that event like we were able to raise uh i think it was like 12 or 1300 dollars all for scholarships as mm-hmm. well so uh i think just like this whole past five months have been so crazy but i think the ultimate um ultimate uh what did you call it the act of service mm-hmm. would be when we go to the schools in a couple of weeks and we surprise the students with their scholarships because mm-hmm. they have no clue what's coming. So yeah. 
going to kind of walk up on them while they're in class and give them their ice scholarship. So I already know that that's going to be wow. the biggest thing. That is so great. Yeah. <laughs> that's exciting. Yeah, I'm super stoked. Yeah. Okay, so I know you just released your new merchandise. Uh, what inspired your Lifted logo and your design for the, the hats? Yeah, so uh, it's actually a kind of cool story. So the title Lifted, um, originally... I wanted to keep it along the themes of the first project's title, which was Tinted, mm -hmm. and it was all caps, all spaced out. Um, so I was kind of trying to think of what I can do to recreate that, but I also felt myself forcing mm -hmm. it. So then I came back to it maybe um, four or five songs into recording the new album. Um, and that was crazy, too, because I had a different title for the album. Mm -hmm. um, I had already had it all planned out and what this album would sound like, and then we ended up scrapping all of that when I came up with the theme. Um, and it comes from the word uplifted. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just kind of taking the lifted portion and saying this is what we're rocking with. Mm -hmm. But really, I wrote probably 90% of the album while in airports, just traveling wow. back and forth mm -hmm. between uh, Michigan and Virginia and just the different cities that I've been to in the past mm -hmm. year. Um, and that's where I wrote most of the album. And then the thing is, like, not being able to have service while on the plane flying. Mm -hmm. So then just playing the same songs over and over and, like, rehearsing the words to my songs. Um, that's where the idea of Lifted came from. Like, this music that I'm writing, I wanted to be able to take me from the place I'm at right now, whether mm -hmm. I'm dealing with anything in my family or dealing with anything, like, mental stuff like depression or mm -hmm. just feeling down or whatever it might be even if I feel good like I want my music to be able to take that person from that current space that they're at right there and to be able to uplift them to whether it's just feeling good about themselves mm -hmm. or having a different outlook um in their current life or whatever the situation might be like I want my music to be able to do that um to uplift them so I wanted um the merch line to kind of represent that as well where it's not just something, I know a lot of people might have merch with just their names mm -hmm. or um, just their symbol or whatever it might be, mm -hmm. and there's like no real meaning behind that. Um, so originally I wanted to do a crown that kind of has like my initials in it. Mm -hmm. So there is like an N and an A there that you can't really tell, mm -hmm. but you know, for my own, my, to make myself feel good, I know that that's right. There. Um, <laughs> But the idea of it came from um, one of my songs where I referenced uh, my hair as my nappy crown. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of where it came from. So just the idea of, for me, being a black man, right. like, this, is, this is like a trademark for us. Mm -hmm. Like, um, So I said it best, like, don't touch my hair, you feel me? Right. So, <laughs> so just the idea of the nappy crown and then just the idea of, like, I want everything that I do inside my daily interactions to be able to uplift people. So, like, right. when people are wearing the hat, like, when I sell it or when they buy it, like, I want that to be, like, what I think about right. like this person just bought it and I hope that now when they're wearing it and they meet a stranger that they do something that might uplift that stranger right. or they do something in their daily interactions that uplifts somebody and it doesn't have to be like buying somebody's shoes and yeah. some crap small or, stuff <laughs> yeah small stuff where there's just being nice to a uh, waiter that looks like she's had a long day mm -hmm. and just like simple stuff that uplifts people right that's good that's yeah. good so yeah, you kind of went into my next question. Uh, I was going to ask what inspired your album, but uh, you can tell us a little about a little bit about the journey in making the album and what it takes to release yeah. and make an album. <laughs> yeah. So it's not an easy process at all, mm -hmm. um, especially like coming from my first project being a mixtape. I was like, okay, this was pretty cool. Like mm -hmm. we recorded it all in my dorm, but then just like the idea of an actual album is like kind of scary when yeah. you first like look at it mm -hmm. so i started recording it in april of 2016 which was like three four months before my mixtape came out and we didn't finish it until close to maybe 10 months it took about um and now we're just gearing up to release it but as i was kind of writing it um i got to work with a super dope producer named young key from jackson for the whole entire project mm -hmm. and um as i was writing it i knew that I wanted it to have like a really big community feel mm -hmm. where it's not my voice just talking about what uplifts me right. or it's not just my voice talking about like things that I've experienced or just things that we experience in general being black in America mm -hmm. or just our daily struggles mm -hmm. like I wanted other people and other faces to represent that as well so like in every single song on the album there's a feature of some sort and it's not always rapping sometimes mm -hmm. it's 
singing or sometimes it's just helping tell that story with me um but it's definitely a big community feel so like i think that was my first thing going into it is mm-hmm. that i wanted like a lot of hands to be involved as well mm-hmm. uh so that people don't see this as just the mikey austin project but this is a project for all of us that we can identify with right. uh, so i think with going going into it with that in mind made writing the songs a lot easier because uh i've wrote a lot of songs where it's just like okay i'm just going to talk about this um that's just like kind of reaching or mm-hmm. uh whatever it might be but this is just like really personal and really stuff that i know that people can identify with so just being able to just unload everything that i think about on a daily basis um that was super cool so just being able to put it on paper mm-hmm. it came out really really easy and then the fact that um, I had just like the creative freedom, whereas so for a mixtape, when I don't own the rights to the instrumentals, uh-huh. um, these instrumentals are already made, so I can kind of restructure it however I want to, but mm-hmm. the basic format of it tells me how my song is going to sound. So uh-huh. whoever produced the music, they pretty much put it in a structure where it's like, okay, you're going to do a hook in the beginning, you're mm-hmm. going to do an inverse, you're going to do another hook, and then a bridge or whatever, then the song is done. Mm-hmm. Um, for this project, I didn't have to worry about that because I had creative freedom from the uh-huh. beginning. To end. So like a lot of it, I would have my band come in and put down live instrumentation and we create music from the scratch. And just being in a position where it's like that, where there's like no structure or you mm-hmm. have to make music like this or you have to write like this and just being able to create from scratch like that, that made me feel lifted throughout the whole process. Yeah. It was like floating on a cloud. So I think of that, um, just being able to tell my story and tell stories for people that might not have a voice but can identify with right. with it, that was in the back of my mind. And then just having the support of my band, like, because that's how I started writing music, was mm-hmm. just on a piano or on a guitar, and just being able to put it all out. So then being able to do the same thing with my band, mm-hmm. uh, it made it so much easier. Right. So, yeah. That's what's up. So, yeah. what can we expect next from Mikey Austin? Well, if you haven't watched my new music video, you can expect to feel really good after watching that. Um, also, like I said, the next single is coming out on Friday. That's crazy. And then the album comes out on the 19th, which is extremely crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, just stuff like that that's coming up really, really soon. But then even past that, like, going into the summertime, I plan to for one, continue to give back to my community Mm -hmm. and continue to um, give art resources to people because I believe that the arts matter in the community. And I know the impact that it had on my life. Um, So I want to be able to use that same tool to impact students' lives right now. Um, So I'm definitely going to continue to do that. Um, I'm already kind of plotting what music is going to come out next. Mm -hmm. Um, But I do know that it's just like super fun just to like rap so like outside of musical projects i've started just like recording different songs or freestyles i put one out like last week Mm -hmm. um a little video to it so just me i would just put stuff out like that where um because there's a difference between writing songs and just rapping right i'm really good at writing songs and sometimes like i have to remind people like i can rap so (laughs) (laughs) uh, yeah just doing different stuff like that and then um live performances like i love for live performances Mm -hmm. So there's definitely going to be a lot coming. June 30th will be the main event for my album. Okay. Uh, so you'll be able to hear that live from beginning to end, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'll also have my band with me for that event. Right. And then just more events coming in the summertime. So That's it's going to be good. fun. I'm so excited for you. I'm excited for you. Thank you. That's good. Well, that concludes the um, interview.